Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, my brother and sister of this world. Today, I'm going to be bringing you a message, and the title of this message is, Money is good, but the love of it is the root of all kinds of evil. Money is good, but the law of it is the root of all kinds of evil. Let me give you some, some common example. You see right now, long time ago, and but now people have tried to change the situation in the churches today. Uh, before, people used to collect tithe and offering in the church. They one time. That's it. Uh, they make a box, put it near the altar, and people walk there and put the, the tithe and the offering in the box. But right now, because of the devil clandestine move, he moved into the church. Now he, he has manipulated the pastors all over the world right now. They do not make one-time collection no more. They do have two-time, three, four, five-time collection. Oh, what, what is going on? Pastors, what is going on around the world right now? How can you exploit the market vendors? Those who are struggling, the poor man, he profit, plus the principal that he need to either go to the market or buy goods to be able to sell to get money. You're going to take a profit, a principal, nothing for him to be able to survive with for the next time. Because of your continuation of the sec second and the, and, and the entire and offering and the third, fourth, fifth. How can you collect one one time offering is not enough. You're going to collect the second time, the third time, the fourth time, the fifth time. Time and offering is supposed to be on a one time collection. On a one time. Why are you robbing these people? You're robbing the people. That's what the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, chapter 22, verse 16. Say you want to try to you know, expand the poor man. You want the poor man to get poor? Poor? Or you want the poor man to get poor? You, you're going to get poor. The man's struggling. And you're going to go rip, you know, rob it. You call yourself pastor. Not one time in a time of collection. You're going to go the second time. The third time. The fourth time. Impossible the fifth time. What is going on? He said, are you preaching salvation to the people for the people's soul to be saved? Or for the people to turn away from the wicked ways? Or for them to accept Christ? For them to repent of their sin? You're not doing it no more. Collection is the best services in the churches right now. When it comes to time and offering or time for collection, then you see now that is the best part of the church. That is the best part. There is no more preaching about salvation. There is no more preaching about repentance. There is no more telling somebody about their ways, their wicked ways. But right now, it's all about time and offering for better food, for more congregation, for big churches, for more popularity. Then the worst of it, when the people pay the time and offering according to the book of Malachi chapter 3, God said there should be food in his store. And the food in his store that you have the, the chance to be, when the people have having problem, you will be able to help them. Financially or materially, you'll be able to help them. But instead, you, you don't have to do it continuously. But at least once in the blue moon, when the people have problems, there should be food in the store to be able to help these people. But instead, you are not doing that. What you're doing, you, you're trying to please yourself. You're trying to get rich. You call yourself a pastor. And you there, you engage into all kind of a 
you know, immoral stuff. Who are you? Are you a pastor or are you a robber? Because you're robbing the people. Five ton collection of offering. Five ton. One ton is a big collection of offering. Not two ton. Not three ton. Not four ton. Not five ton. Five ton, two ton, three ton is a robbery. You are robbing the people, people. You are robbing them. Oh my goodness. What a shame. So compassion around the world. How can you say you preach to the people and you, you rotting rich and they are suffering? How come? You think if Jesus Christ went around, you think he's he he going to be like y'all? You saw what Jesus Christ did. He showed a common example. There was a bike right there near the altar. Everybody was walking in to pay the tithe and offering. Some people had more money. They were putting in more, you know, putting in a little bit. But they had more at home. But the, the widow, the poor widow, dropped in her two pennies. And Jesus Christ said, this woman put in more than everybody who put the in. And his disciples were astonished. And asking, how can this be? You say the woman put in all that she had. All that she had that is that she will yet starve to death. Nothing she had. But these other people, the one that they put it in, they have more at home. And they just giving God a little bit. You see? So, it's not ever tight in offering. God do not want your, uh, your, self, your ugly money, your blood money, your wicked money. He have, the whole world is for God. God is the richest man ever. He don't want your money for you to come there and be exploiting the poor people, collecting tight in offering. One, two, three, four. Four, five times. What a shame. I repeat, are you a pastor or are you a robber? Are you a, a true man of God or are you a robber? You robbing the people. Now I'll go into the scripture. First Timothy chapter 6 verses 10. And I read, for the love of money is a source of all kinds of evil. Some have been so eager to have it that they have wandered away from the faith and have broken their hearts with many sorrow. Because of the love of money, some have wandered away. The wonder away. From the faith of God, the truth. Now, most of the pastors, the, the true spirit of God has left them. What in them right now is evil spirit, money spirit. And right now, wherever they are, because they wonder for the faith, and they have a broken heart that filled with sorrows. That all they do right now, all the churches there right now, they implement, they follow one another full step. Because the other pastor, he, he and his church, they are doing it. So the other church is going to follow the same full step. All of them, every one of them. No more one time collection. You sort of set the big box near the altar. Let the people walk in and put a tie in the offering like, like the old town religion. Instead of that, I said it'll be they'll pass. I said they'll pass it they, 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 I don't know, a basket or whatever. Pass it right in front of people. Distraction. 
when it comes to tithe offering, that is their churches right now. That is the best part of the ceremony of the, the church service. Tithe offering collection. That is their best service. No salvation. No preaching about repentance. No preaching about somebody living a wicked life. No telling somebody say, oh yeah, stop doing that. They're not preaching God salvation no more. They're not preaching nothing about repentance no more. All the preaching right now is when it comes to money. That's all they are doing. So right now, someone there, right now, someone there said, oh my God, the guy is there again. He preaching the mess. How can we get to this guy to destroy him? Yeah, the plan to get to me to destroy me. But let me tell you, let's go on to, I would say, 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy 4, verse 3. And I read, 2 Timothy 4, 3. That is the, you know, the, the, right now, most of them don't want to listen to the messages that I preach. So let me let me tell you what, what is, what's going on right now. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 3. The time will come when people will not listen to sign doctrine, but they will follow their own desire and will collect for themselves more and more teachers who will tell them what they are itching to hear. That other, for me, Right now, I am the worst enemy. Most of the congregation, or most of the people in the audience, and the pastors there. The people in the audience, some of them want to let, they want to listen to the man of God who going to tell them something to each their ear. They don't want to listen to no sound doctrine. Like what I'm preaching about, or telling them, you know, about pastors there collecting, tying, offering over and over, one, two, three, four, five, they don't want to listen to that. They want to listen to each ear message that, oh yeah, you're going to prosper. Oh, tomorrow, about $10,000 is going to come to your doorstep. That's the kind of messages that they want me to preach. I'm not going to preach that. I am not on your supervision. I am on the authority of the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I am not preaching messages to please man. I'm preaching messages for somebody's soul to be revived. Some, somebody to repent of their sin. For somebody to change their life. That is the message that I'm preaching. I'm preaching to you pastor right there. You sitting in the audience right there. I'm preaching to you. Turn away from your wicked ways. And God will accept you. He will forgive you. But if you continue with that, oh, the wrath that is coming upon you. Everybody going to know what you have been doing. That is the payment you, you're going to get. I don't know if I, I because right now, it's like I'm on fire right now. So let's go into the book of 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. And I read. So oh, I think I read it. Hallelujah. Yeah. So let's go on to Matthew chapter 6, verses 24. Matthew 6, 24. And I read. One man cannot serve two masters. He will hate one and love the others. He will be loyal to one and despise the other. You cannot love both God and money. Yeah. You cannot say you go and serve men of God. You want to love God and you want to love money. No. You cannot serve two masters. You got for the love of money is the root of all evil. So that is the devil error. 
You want to send the devil? Go ahead and send the devil. But don't flatter the people or in the brainwash the people or fake the people thinking that, oh yeah, you are a true man of God. Not knowing that you love money, you can do any evil. But how come you see today all over the world right now, and if you check it in the United States and so many countries around the world, there are so many people right now that are not preaching salvation or repentance or preaching for somebody left to be changed. Rather, what the preaching is the people pay the tithe and the offering according to the book of Malachi, chapter 3, verse 8, that all oh, that should be full in God's storehouse. So if if, if possible, if one of these members have a problem, they can go to the pastor and say, Pastor, I have a problem financially. Or I, I, I do not have food to eat. So the food that is in God's store, you will be able to help these people because they pay the time and the offering for food to be in the storehouse of God. For food to be in the storehouse of God. But instead... They do not even care about these people. There's some of them, they are writing rich. They are men and near pastors. So how can you be a men and near pastor? How can you be a writing rich pastor? How can you? Then the poor, the people who pay the time and offering, they are poor, they are struggling. How can you? How? How can you be a pastor and you are writing rich? But you know what? I got good news for you. Let us search to Matthew chapter 19. Let's start from the 23, verse 23. Matthew chapter 19. Glory be to you, Jesus. And I read, Jesus replied to his disciples. Listen, Jesus then said to his disciples, I assure you, it will be very hard for rich people to enter into the kingdom of hell. You hear that? I am not the one who said that. Jesus Christ said that. So you parts of circle parts of the run world, you writing rich, and the poor people are getting more poor because you are sucking all the resources for them to, you know, to be successful. You have taken away some of that, some of them going well back to being poor. You take away their resources, their, 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 their profit, their, their principle. How will they be able to prosper to be able to be able to, 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 to be able to pay the time and offering? You have sucked everything out of them. You do not collect time and offering one time. You collect it for the second time. The third time, the fourth time, the fifth time, time and offering. And some of the people, the one time, you sort of set the bags right in front of the altar there. Let the people walk and put the time and the offering in the bags. Not exploiting them. But God is watching you. Desist. Turn away from your wicked ways. Preach to the people about salvation. Preach to the people about repentance. Tell them about Jesus loves you. Tell them to love one another. Preach the message. The true message of salvation. Preach it. Not ever money. So you, then, you know what? Let me go on to Matthew chapter. I read 23. Or oh, you want you want oh yes, I get something to say. Read 23 again. Matthew 19, 23. I'm gonna read it. Jesus then said to his disciple, I assure you, it will be very hard. For rich people to enter the kingdom of heaven. Let me drop to 24. I repeat. And Jesus Christ, the disciples were grumbling. Like the other people grumbling right now in the audience. So the disciples were grumbling. So Jesus Christ said, I repeat. It is much harder for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. Than for a camel to go to the eyes of of a needle. Oh my goodness. Can you imagine? I don't think rich people are going to enter heaven. Because it is impossible for a 
camel to go through the eyes of a needle. That big animal, can you imagine, to go through the eyes of a needle? So, if you are smart, you reach me wherever you are. You soak up pastors around the world, collecting. You have millions and millions of dollars in your account while the poor people are getting poorer and poorer. They are homeless. They, are, they don't have no food. They don't even have clothes to wear. Then you say you call yourself pastor. You, the people pay the tithe and the offering. And you sit in there, you say you rich. But let me tell you today. If you do not take all that possession and go around the world establishing churches and helping the poor people, building homes for the poor, the homeless, the blind, the crippled, God say, I'm going to tell you, he will strike. When God read the strike, nobody knows. He knows how to perform. He's the miraculous one to God. He will strike. But he said, I'm going to warn you, if you do not sell Give all that your possession to the poor people. If you don't have that, God said, I'm going to tell you, he going to be distracted. Repent of your sin. Taking all the people tithe and offering, then you put it into your account. And you sit down there and say, you rich. You rot and rich. It will be easier for a camel to go through the eyes of a needle than for the rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. So when you're, when you're reading the Bible, you're so called men of God. You're reading the Bible. When you're reaching that part, how do you read it? How do you interpret it? How do you understand it? Then, then they get uh, they in, in the north, say, then they get some poor pastor or poor men of God around the world. They're trying to follow the footsteps of the rich pastor. Don't be like them. I warn you. Don't be like them. Collect your time and the offering one time. You know what? First uh, Corinthians chapter 16. First Corinthians chapter 16, verse 1 and 2. And I read. Now I'm concerning what you wrote about the money to be raised to help God's people in Judea. You must do what I told you, what I told the churches in Galatia to do. So, you better do what the Holy Spirit has instructed me to tell you. Now concerning the collection of the money or Tie an offering. Wait. Verse 2. Every Sunday, each of you must put aside some money in preparation to what you have earned and to save it up so that there will be no more or no need to collect money when I come. That one Paul was telling the other uh, you know, uh, disciples. So I'm telling you right now. You congregation right now. You got to set aside money. Set aside before Sunday. That you're going to go and pay your tithe and your offering. When these so-called pastors go and rob you of that. Leave them to God. God will revenge on your behalf. God will retaliate. If they don't repent of the sin, God will retaliate on your behalf. That's what the book of Proverbs 22 verse 16 say. Oh, you want the poor man to get poorer? You yourself are going to get poor. Because God is going to take everything that you took from the poor man. What a shame. You sit there. Instead of you preaching to the people about salvation, repentance, and telling the people to love one another, tell them to you know take you know take the the, 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 the the cross and carry it, or tell the people to you know carry one another burden or help one another. No, you preaching about money. Money is the most happier in the town in the church. When it comes to 
tithe offering. That is the time you can see the pastor sitting down on the side. He's there watching the congregation. He's there watching. So now their, their eyes are eagle eyes. They'll penetrate through the people's pocket. See how many even take it up to give, to put in the, 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 the tithe offering bags. What a shame. They don't appreciate about salvation no more. All the picture about now is money. Then I can, from my recollect, from my recollection, I can remember, and no pastor gonna tell you that. Oh yeah, C. A. Patrick Mason ever you know we count the money he ever sat in Mars. No, never. In fact, I don't want to associate with the money business. Every pastor who knows me, to the churches in the, that God used me to go and plant or help, none of them will tell you I ever sat down with, with, with the you know in the meeting and talk about money. Or it's no 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 no. I hustle. I go up there and look for my own money, my own daily bread. Yeah, Paul. Paul had the same attitude. He was a ten maker. Make a ten, how to get his own money. He and Barnabas, they had a privilege for people to sow the tithe and the offering on them, but they don't want for the people to capitalize on that and say, oh yeah, we pay your tithe and offering dinner. So Paul and Barnabas, they, they, were, they were hustling, doing, looking for money on their own. Because they don't want for anybody to use that as a stepping stone to get to them. So called pastors around. Yeah, yeah, save my life. Save my life. All the changes I've been. Have you ever saw me one day talking my money? What a shame. Because I don't care about that. I, I, money is good. But I get it in a way that. When God's when God when I get it, God say yes. My good servant. Now the gonna go sit down there. Then someone there, I will help you one church. I say <laughs> the pastor even went behind me and said saying all kind of a negative stuff about me, how I am nudging the people, you know, and they will, and I take too long, you know, the place of worship, you know, I take you long. So when I, the Holy Spirit, you know, led me to leave and go somewhere else to help, and he said all the things that I used to do, like what he started doing. <laughs> uh, he started anointing people now, because he was telling the people now, why I'll be using anointing oil. <laughs> uh, now they say he the one that's doing it now. The anointing oil, it looked like, with all the anointing oil, he can't do anything. <laughs> oh God! So that's what the people do. They don't want for you to do anything that it's sad. So I will not even part of. I never want this sad under say, "Oh yeah, and yeah, how much I supposed to get?" No, no, no I never asked none of that. And it, every church is. I don't have to call the names. No pastor gonna tell you say, "Oh yeah, C. A. Patrick Mason ever came to us or say I'm talking about money business." None of that. So, if you are a man of God around the world today, and you listen to the message, you better repent. Because God said he's going to retaliate all revenge for the poor people. All the money you all have been exploiting, the poor people, God say he's going to retaliate. He's going to revenge for them. Because it's it, too much. You're going to collect time offering. Now one time, two, three, four, five. What, what, are you playing with God? Here, Matthew chapter 19. It will be easier for the camera to go through the eyes of the needle than for the rich man to enter into the kingdom of hell. So in short war, no rich man going to enter into the kingdom of hell. Because camera cannot go to the eyes of the needle. <laughs> oh my goodness. Then when I know what it, 
How, how do you guys read the Bible? When you read the Bible, when you read a certain part that you, you jump over it, so called men of God. How can you be a, a, a man of God? Meaning, it's my feet are not it's for the men of God. God is wanting the men of God around the world. My feet are the How can you be a man of God and you rightly read you a men of the Then the people who pay the tithe and offering are suffering. They are getting, not, they are not poor, but they are poor. The, the, the tithe and offering that they pay make it to be whoever the, your so called riches that you say you have. They don't want to make it to be that. What a shame. Oh, some of them, oh, they, they wish it to get me. <laughs> but I, I said it a long time ago. If you come behind me and say you want to get me, or if you touch anyone from my family, uh, my immediate family, Oh, I'm sorry, man. You, you first of all, you you cannot come around. As you are coming, there ain't gonna be a disaster news about your family. Why you are playing to do to me? Your plan, even if you don't succeed, it will go right back to your family. It will be reverse. You dig in a hole, you going to go into that pit yourself. So God told me, say, my son, don't be a friend. I am your protector. I will guide you and protect you in every way. But don't relent. Don't give up. Preach it. Send the other one. They don't want to preach it. They want to compromise. Do not compromise with sin. Preach the word of salvation to the people around the world. Let them repent of the sin. Let them let be transformed to my Holy Spirit. That said the Lord. Now go on to the next scripture. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 10 and 12. Ecclesiastic. That will be the Old Testament. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 10 and 12. And I read, if you love money, let me start over. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 10 to 12. Verse 10. If you love money, you will never be satisfied. Well, oh, you're going to be miserable. You cannot even have a good hour of sleep because you, because you love money. You will never be satisfied. So let me continue reading. <laughs> if, if you love money, you will never be satisfied. If you long to be rich, you will never get all you want. It is useless. Hello, Mr. Pastors there who won't try to follow the evil Men of God around the world. There are some young, young pastor who, you know, everybody knows them to be struggling, but now they're emulating there. They find the footsteps of the rich pastors. So God said, Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 10. I read it one more time. If you love money, you will never be satisfied. If you, you learn to be rich, you will never get all you want. It is useless. Because, let me give you a common example. Naked, you came into the war. And naked, you're going to go. There are, there, are, there are some people who have that, you know, that mentality. That when they die, did you put all the stuff there in the in the casket? <laughs> you just you know tell the guys they who take care of the graveyard to break that casket and get you know money you know take all your possession that you say you carry. No, because naked you came into the war and naked you're gonna go back. Naked you came and naked you're gonna go back. 
You ain't gonna carry nothing. So listen to me, Mr. Sucker, reach past us in the run of war. You just fooling yourself. The Bible says it's useless. Oh, oh, thank you, Jesus. Verse 11. The richer you are, the more moth you must feed. That one is it sound good. All you gain is knowledge that you are rich. Oh, oh, oh yeah, you hear about that man? Oh, and John Brown? Oh, yeah, John Brown is rich. The richer you are, the more moth you're gonna feed. And some of them, they are so stingy. They they, they, they go on the contrary about the, the particular force, force level. They don't care that everything is about there. It's me, 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 me. Me, me, me. Not me, 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 myself and I is it, like that. Me, myself, and I. All about there. They're not going to verse 12. Listen to verse 12. Workers all may not have enough to eat. They don't even care about the workers. But at least they can get a good night's sleep. Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah! The poor people, they can get a good night's sleep. But for the rich people, oh, because of the, the Craving desire about what they want to get the next day. They can't, they don't have to even sleep. They just sitting down thinking how they want to get rich. They are not satisfied. Either they're gonna get the, the, the rear way or the crook way. They don't they, they don't have to have good sleep that you and I, according to what the Bible says. The rich, however, have so much that they stay awake worrying. Oh! So, Mr. Soccer rich pastors, then Mr. Soccer rich pastor and the other pastor there who do not know who they are and try to emulate or find the first step. I will tell you right now, you are standing on a sinking sand, a broken stick. It's an undependable person. The soccer men of God around the world. You want to find the first step? You are new long time ago, you were struggling. You were going ever, you are you are you are doing well in your faith. You are preaching the gospel correctly. But well, why made the deviate and start going the rich people way? Or and start going the demonic way or the devil ways? Why? Who fool you? Repent. Because God said, I'm going to tell you, He's going to retaliate or revenge for the poor people. You are going to see it very soon. You are going to see it. He's going to disgrace every one of them. He will bring them on a complete suggestion of his anointing through the Holy Spirit. He's going to dis disarm them. Disassemble them. Oh, listen to me. He's going to disarm them and disassemble them. They're going to be worthless, useless. And the whole world is going to know that they will have the God rich. It was through the people, the poor people. So God said, they have robbed the poor people for long. It's enough. It's enough. Let's go on to Luke chapter 16, verse 13 to 15. Luke chapter 16, verse 13 to 15. That will be the, the New Testament. Look. 
Luke chapter 16, verse 13 to 15. And I read. Uh, that's, the, that's the same thing in Matthew chapter 6. You know, Matthew chapter 6, verses uh, 24. But anyway, let me read it. No servant can serve two masters. Such as a servant will hate one and love the other. Or be loyal to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. You can't. You're, yeah, I, I have a lot of proof. Everything I preach here, if it's not from the Bible, I will not preach it. So I have many evidence. You all are guilty. The only way you can be guilty is say you, you have a wisdom of proof. Yeah, I have that proof here. I read the proof. You all are guilty. Deviate. Do not mind these people. Do not follow their footsteps. You are doing well in your Christian journey. How can you change? You start following their, 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 their mega churches or their rich pastors around the world and you start doing the same thing to your poor church. Your poor church that everybody will enjoy you but now the people, they are wondering why are we collecting offering for four times? Four times you collect offering, time and offering. They have the good way offering. They have the traveling offering. They have the and so come so all offering. Then they have the kingdom come offering. And they actually get, they get different different names of the offering that they usually collect. Offering it should be only two title, tie a regular offering. That's it. The traveling and the offering, the ambassador offering, the minister offering. I said different different names. They come and see offering. The pastor who can preach offering. <laughs> I went to a mother church, I think either four or five years ago, and she told me in, because the message I preached is what I'm just telling you about. The message was so strong. She said, Pastor! She, she, then she was, the funny thing is, she was right in front of the mic, and everybody was there watching. She said, Pastor! So I was behind. So I said, What happened? She said, Pastor, I don't think the people are going to give you any offering. I said, what happened? She said, Pastor, the way you the way you play with the people today. <laughs> I said, Isha what? I don't need no offering. And I was saying, I don't need no offering for you. Because she, the funny thing is, uh, she kept on going to the church I was helping. The, the head pastor of the church, and she kept on coming to him and said, Oh, can you please tell Pastor Mason to come and preach? Can you please tell Pastor? She did it, I think, th and three times. So the third time, he told me, say, The pastor told me, say, uh, Pastor Mason? I said, Yes. The woman always coming to, to engage you for you to go and preach to her church. Why can't you go? I said, you, you really want me to go? You say, Yes. <laughs> I said, okay, tell her that I will be there the coming Sunday. And when I went there, it was history. So let me tell you right now, pastors. I am more. I did all such a terrible things in life. <laughs> you know, so that's what we're gonna ask one time about ask me, what kind of terrible thing you did? I say I smoke, mm, uh, I drink, and I womanize. You see that that thing you call it terrible. 
<laughs> I say yes, because all sins in the eyes of God is equal. So it's terrible. To you it's not terrible, but to me it's terrible because I shouldn't have done it. I should have not. But anyway, I did a lot of terrible things. But God said, let me tell you today, if you do not desist, because the Bible said, if you know to do good, <laughs> you want me to read it? We're going to go to uh, James chapter 4 verse 17. Then Proverbs chapter 14 verse 12. And I read, so then, those who do not do good, they know they should do, they are guilty of sin. In the, uh, the King James, I'm reading from the Good News Translation, but if you go to the uh, King James, they will tell you, that he that knows how to do good and don't do it, you sin. There are so many people right now around the world. Some pastors, they know the scripture. But it looks like when they read the scripture, they are like they don't know it. He that knows to do good and don't do it, it's a sin. Why will you collect offering at a four, five thumb? One, two, three, four, five. You, you rob the poor man. You exploit them. Who you are. And you think I'm going to sit there and don't talk? You are standing on a broken stick. Because I, through the Holy Spirit, will come out to represent the gospel and tell you the truth. Then let's go to Proverbs chapter 14 verse 12. The Old Testament. What you think is right? I mean, let me take my time and read it. What you think is the right role may lead to death. So let me tell you today. If you think whatever you are doing right now, you think that, oh yeah, it's okay. You continue to go ahead. But it's going to lead you to death. It's going to lead to God's severe punishment. That increasing punishment that God is going to give you, it, it's going to be unbelievable because only you will be experiencing that increasing pain that God is going to put upon you. It's going to be so severe that only you will be able to explain it. If you don't repent, you have the chance. You have the ability right now. You have the chance to repent right now. If you don't give all that possession, all the money that you have exploited the poor people through the tithe and the offering and give it back to the, the poor people, God said, I'm going to tell you, very soon, the whole world is going to see how he going to disarm you and disassemble you. Glory be to Jesus.
talking prophet. Let me I read it from the King James Version right now. That is a way of sin right unto man, but the the end thereof is death. That is a way of sin right unto you right now. You did everything right now. Oh, like I'm, I'm preaching, I'm going to you to warn you, or you won't try to, you know, you know, you know, beat it off the shoulder and say, oh yeah, I'm talking too much. But everything I'm talking, I have proof. Do you have proof of what you're doing? The evil stuff that you're doing. Do you have proof? Mine, I have proof. Everything that I, I say to you, I have proof. Let's go on to Hebrew chapter 13, verses 5. Hebrew chapter 13, verses 5. And I read, keep your lives free from the love of money. I repeat that. Keep your life free from the love of money. And be satisfied with what you have. Be content with what you have. Now how come you see today, there are the pastors who are following the other pastors who have mega churches that are paying the tithe the offering one, two, three, four, five times. They are not content. That is why they are following the, the first step of the mega churches there. They so called pastors in the around. Their little church, everybody knew them. It was, they were doing pretty well. And when you put when people put the tie in the offering in the tie, in the offering box, it's God through his manifestation that everything gonna be paid. 